ballistic missile test set for early Wednesday morning from Vandenberg AFB. A missile test from Vandenberg Air Force Base may be visible into parts of Kern County early Wednesday morning. Officials at Vandenberg say a test launch for an unarmed intercontinental ballistic missile Minuteman 3 is set for launch during a six-hour window between 12.08 a.m. and 6.08 a.m. on February 5. KCLU Radio in Thousand Oaks reports the launch is expected during the 1 a.m. hour on Wednesday. Following the test you may see a rocket exhaust trail during the early morning hours. Vandenberg officials say, depending on weather, if you're in central and southern California to look into the sky between 30 to 50 minutes before sunrise for a twisted, milky or otherwise unusual cloud. That could be the exhaust trail from the missile itself. The cloud will eventually drift from Vandenberg Air Force Base towards the east-southeast into western areas of Kern County. The markets are discounting air return to normal in China next week. That is a very risky bet. Students of military history recognize any signs of a siege. The movement of the Coronavirus, Nkov 2019, inside China looks like a battle map. We all know much more about Wuhan than we did three weeks ago, but Shanghai's status as one of the world's great cities has never been in doubt. It is the center of Chinese finance and supports a manufacturing hub that extends for for many miles outside the city center. It's certainly near the top of my list of cities I have visited, and unfortunately Shanghai is now under siege from the Coronavirus. Statistics would indicate that the virus is still in its nascent stage in Shanghai so far, with 208 patients infected and only one fatality so far. That said, the images of Shanghai's ghost town-like streets are really quite disturbing during a week that should have seen the populace busily hurrying back to work after the Lunar New Year Golden Week holiday. The most disturbing news today was the effective quarantine of Hangzhou, a major city in Zhejiang province, adjacent to Shanghai. Hangzhou is only 180 kilometers from Shanghai, and if a city of 9.8 million can be shuttered this has already happened in Wuhan, which has a population of 11 million then investors need to understand the risks facing China's economy. After the U.S. equity markets rally of the past two days, the zeitgeist can be summed up thusly. Everything will return to normal next Monday, and the one-week extension of the holiday will be a minor nuisance to China-dependent companies such as Tesla, Apple Disney and Nike. That's a hell of a risky bet to make. It's almost as if the markets are betting that China's President Xi is willing to prioritize economic growth over public safety. That would be more plausible if the Chinese government's reaction to the initial outbreak of Nkov 2019, now pegged to have begun on or about December 1, hadn't been slow, opaque and utterly ineffective. So, that's where we stand. What happens in China next week will define the shape of the market's trajectory for 2020. Do factories reopen, as scheduled, on the 10th? Do Chinese consumers head back to public spaces like Starbucks and movie theaters? Is confidence impacted to the extent that Shanghai consumers might think twice about spending 3.5x average annual income on a Tesla Model 3 or other such high-valued purchases? The PBOC's injections of yuan into the banking system will have zero impact on the Chinese consumer. Those monies only prevent a bank-run scenario against banks that are, by any international standard, over-leveraged to begin with. The Chinese state will attempt to dictate when things return to normal after this horrible pandemic, already one of the worst natural disasters in China's recent history. But this isn't 1975. China's state control over the economy has long since been ceded to oligarchs like Jack Ma and major multinationals. The government can make whatever proclamations it chooses, and this is truly Xi's moment. Ultimately, though, it is the consumer who will dictate what happens to the Chinese economy. Fear is a very power-negative force on economic behavior. More than 20,000 people have been infected with Nkov 2019, more than double the amount infected by SARS in 2002-2003. I believe the number will rise much higher, as human-to-human -human spread has been confirmed. I am worried about the health of the Chinese populace, and by implication the Chinese consumer. You should be, too. Coronavirus cases down from weekend levels as China predicts fall in mortality rates don't be on it. But the last 24 hours has seen a decline of new cases versus the previous three days. The novel coronavirus outbreak seems to have stalled out in China. The Johns Hopkins University tracking system shows a leveling off of new caseloads, and they are now on par with where they were a week ago following big jumps since last Thursday. In addition, China's National Health Commission, NHC, predicted on Tuesday that the mortality rate would start to taper off in the days ahead. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization said early this morning that the viral outbreak has not reached a rate for them to consider this a global pandemic. All of this is good news for China.
providing the news holds. Jiao Yahui, deputy director of the NHC's Medical Administration Bureau, said that as of Monday, the national fatality rate was 2.1 percent, with the majority of deaths at the epicenter of the outbreak in Hubei province. The average fatality rate was only of 0.16 percent outside of Hubei, with around 80 percent of those who died being over 60 years old. At least 75 percent of confirmed deaths were people who had underlying health problems such as diabetes, she said, according to the South China Morning Post. Based on data from Johns Hopkins, the number of confirmed cases rose from 7,700 on January 29 to 9,700 on the 30th, 11,200 on the 31st, and ballooned out to 14,300 on February 1st, and and again by another 2,000-plus fresh cases on February 2, bringing the total as of Sunday to 17,200. Since then, total confirmed cases rose to 20,703 bringing the case load back to an average of 1,500 to 1,700 per day worldwide before the explosion of newly infected persons began last weekend. Everyone wants to see the death toll top off, with markets forecasting the mortality figures to come in close to SARS death toll of 775, reached in 2003. The novel coronavirus is of unknown origin at this time, with arguments being made that it came from bat-to-human contact or was genetically modified by Chinese microbiology researchers and escaped a lab in Wuhan. Arbital, an antiviral drug used for treating influenza in Russia and China, could be combined with the anti-HIV drug Darunavir for treating patients afflicted with the novel coronavirus, according to China Business News, citing a proposal on Tuesday by China's National Health Commission expert Li Lanwen. Should the death toll surpass SARS, widely expected to occur by next week if the weekend-level death rates continue apace, then the question becomes whether the number of infected persons is declining below the 1,500 per day threshold seen since January 26. Investors will want to see a decline in daily new cases if the number of deaths rises over 800. The escalation of the novel coronavirus has caused serious concerns among the Chinese public, disrupting both social and economic activity during a busy holiday season and putting the country's health system under strain. There are still considerable challenges ahead, and as such, making a call on the outcome at this stage is extremely difficult, says Aidan Yao, an economist for Oxa Investment Managers in Hong Kong. It's fair to say that the previous consensus outlook of smoother sailing for the Chinese economy in 2020 has been significantly called into question. Some provinces urged companies to remain closed after the Lunar New Year holiday, with some staying closed all this week. Hubei businesses, for the most part, are closed until February 13. The scale and force of these emergency measures are unlike anything China has done in response to public health emergencies. Those measures, coupled with precautions taken by individuals, should control the spread of the virus. This is what everyone is currently banking on at the moment. As far as economic fallout, data from the Ministry of Transportation showed that overall travel shrank during the busy Lunar New Year season by some 70 percent, compared to last year's holiday. The cancellation of new movie releases and movie theater closures over the holiday means this year's box office sales will be lower than the 5.9 billion yuan, $842 million, recorded in 2019. Retail sales, which brought in more than 1 trillion yuan, $142 billion, in revenue last year, should also fall as shopping malls were closed and people are refraining from going out. China's central bank saves the day as coronavirus seems to level off another lesson on China. Never bet against Yi Gang. The People's Bank of China Bok, cut interest rates for short-term debt after a liquidity injection on Monday, protecting its stock market on Tuesday. The move also gave a lift to U.S. markets, still beating back the Wuhan flu. China's A-shares, as measured by this tracker's China CSI 300, ASHR, Exchange Traded Fund, is up 4.75 percent, thanks to the central bank's actions. China's tech companies continue to brave the coronavirus outbreak today, as the locals, mostly stuck in their home cities on lockdown orders, are perceived to be using more e-commerce platforms than before. The market thinks so anyway, and so companies like JD.com, JD, and Alibaba, Baba, are both up by more than 4 percent. The drug-related companies that rocketed on Friday and Monday are selling off as China predicts a leveling off in mortality rates. Shanghai Pharmaceutical is down 3.3 percent. Boki International Medical, BMI, the drug store chain that rose over 80 percent in two days, is returning some of those gains back today and is off by 12 percent. Until the novel coronavirus works its way out of the system, the PBOC is seen giving more policy support to businesses. 
Nomura's chief China economist thinks the central bank will give targeted support for the virus-affected regions and to companies hardest hit. We expect Beijing to increase its targeted liquidity injection via targeted reserve ratio requirement cuts, pledged supplementary lending, policy bank lending, lowering the financing costs for targeted entities through increasing subsides and lower or wave taxes on affected entities, he says. Industries that supply medical equipment and other necessary goods for public health may also get specific government support, mostly via credit easing. The outbreak comes at a time when many companies in China were reeling because of the trade war. To contain the virus in Wuhan and the Hubei province, China has greatly restricted travel. Total confirmed cases seems to have leveled off.